what's up guys hope everybody's doing well and having a great day in this video we're going to start down here in new south wales australia where i've received a couple of absolutely spectacular photos from collette b along the gold coast get a load of these gigantic orange beams spanning out across the ocean i'm telling you it's all about that sun angle and these are epic epic skies for sure coming out of new south wales sent in by colette b thank you colette also in this video we're going to check out the sun angle up here in the northern hemisphere i want to show you what the shadow is doing it is now in retreat also iss lightning i've received some video footage from the international space station from margaret w of what appears to be lightning at the very top of the clouds looking down from 250 miles above planet earth also we're going to go to livemeteors.com where virginia r noticed this very unique anomaly going through the ionosphere a few days back something apparently thousands of miles long went through the ionosphere basically undetected but first here at the website checking out the schumann resonance you can see a little bit of activity starting to pick up in the schumann data that can be related back to this earth facing coronal hole it's not necessarily an active region but there is a stream of high speed solar wind that right back here this is as it's rotating left to right right in here when the coronal hole is over here that stream of solar wind came towards the earth and it has arrived so look for that to increase at least for the next few hours but that's from that earth facing coronal hole hopping over to the yellowstone super volcano caldera looking at the seismographs a little bit of earthquake activity at the madison river seismo a little bit of action over here at the northwest quadrant north quadrant and northeast quadrants everything else is about what we've been seeing over the past few months a little bit of activity across most of the seismographs that monitor the super volcano and i would expect that to be honest after all it is a super volcano i want to show you guys the shadow now how we've been measuring it since the summer solstice and the shadow was way up here in the four inch mark and i'm at the 33 degree north latitude and the shadow has grown exponentially over the months as we reached the winter solstice. I measured this on December 23rd, just keeping it fair. The solstice was actually on the 21st. But on December 23rd, the shadow peaked at about 35 and a half inches. I measured it again yesterday. Here's the shadow, same location, same instruments, same time. And you can see the shadow is shrinking. Instead of 35.5 inches, the shadow is now 35 inches. So the shadow shrinking, that means the sun is rising once again in the southern sky. It's getting a little bit higher. So the shadow will slowly decrease throughout January, throughout February, throughout March, April, May, June, when the shadow, at least from my location, will shrink all the way back down to about four inches. Actually, just under four inches. So based off of my measurements, January 8th of 2021, shadow shrinking, that means the sun is indeed moving back closer to the equator and into the northern hemisphere. I wanna take you guys up to the International Space Station where Margaret W. shared something with me she saw a couple of weeks ago from the ISS looking down at Earth while it was on the nighttime side of the planet. And she noticed these bright flashes of light and what those are, are lightning flashes from cloud tops down on planet Earth. And I'm going to show you a picture that was shared with me by Mary Hall, who observes the space station quite frequently. And she sent in this photo here from the International Space Station. Those are actually cloud tops, very tall cloud tops down on planet Earth. And sometimes those energetic clouds put off energy in the form of lightning. And it is indeed visible from the International Space Station. It's easy to get the misconception that that's occurring in space 
But that's not occurring in space. That's actually down on Earth, on the dark side of the Earth. Not exactly sure of the location of the time of the video that, that she shared with me, but the ISS was clearly on the dark side of the planet. But right there is what you could see, what Mary shared with us. There are very high clouds down there that we can't see that were loaded with lightning, creating that phenomenon. So good observation by Margaret. Thanks for sharing. Virginia R. noticed this in the ionosphere. And this goes back to December 17th when something mysteriously went through the ionosphere kind of undetected really at least it didn't make any noise and i want to show you something real quick how this instrument works we're going to go over to livemeteors.com in fact there's a meteor right there that just entered the atmosphere and when it enters the atmosphere it will make a a noticeable noise and it'll register down here on this graph that goes horizontally and you'll hear a noise when it enters the ionosphere this particular instrument is located on the east coast you got a tower here in the dc area and a transmitter up in the canada area and here's where it's situated here in this area all the way up into canada okay so this is the area we're talking about that's receiving this data that you're seeing on this instrument that's where this instrument is located so whatever it was that came through the ionosphere on the night of december 17th and you're going to see something right here that's very unusual you don't see that on here much you see this and when a meteor does enter the atmosphere now that antenna covers a very large area but you'll hear a ping a noticeable ping and that indicates usually a meteor entered the atmosphere but what i want to do is show you guys what she noticed a few days back this big long what looks like a trail in the ionosphere that's not a rocket launch. This is from December 17th. I looked, there was a rocket launch scheduled for that day, but it did not happen. And I'm not sure a rocket launch would show up between DC and Canada, but there's some sort of a very long, and I'm talking this thing is thousands of miles long because what I've done is put it in fast forward, obviously, because this is over the course of 10 to 15 minutes. Whatever this anomaly is or was, you can see it's being influenced it's not perfectly straight, so it's being influenced by the energy in the ionosphere. Something went through the ionosphere based off of what we're seeing here. It left a trail, but didn't necessarily make any noise that was picked up by the antenna or transmitter over here at livemeteors.com, which it's a very good instrument. I've followed this for years, especially during meteor showers. It's actually kind of fun to sit over here and listen to meteors enter the atmosphere. It's actually pretty cool. I've never seen anything like that, and neither had she. And she's a longtime viewer of this instrument. Whatever that was, was very stealthy, went through the upper atmosphere in the ionosphere. It was detected by this instrument. That was a, a great observation by Virginia, who detected that anomaly that came in here from the left. It kind of migrated over to the right, back over to the left over the course of between 10 or 15 minutes, some sort of a strange anomaly in the ionosphere. Once again, absolutely spectacular photos by Colette coming out of New South Wales, Australia. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. All of the photos end up here at the Sky Phenomena Photo Gallery at the website. And sometimes I'll use them in a video just like you saw right here. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.